Hello and welcome to the Monday, January 15th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Looking back at last week and at Spectre and the Microsoft updates, one item that probably caused the most questions and confusion was the registry key being used to block application of this particular patch. Boyan in a diary points out that this isn't actually the first time that Microsoft did that. There was an other patch back from 2014 that blocked the use of clear text credentials in memory, something that tools like Mimikatz, for example, are abusing. And well, uh, again, a registry key here is being used to block application of this particular patch. And now this at this point really should affect only few systems, but uh, something you probably do want to check in particular if you're still running Windows 2008 R2, which are systems that were affected by this particular registry key blocking application of this patch. And it looks like Intel can't really catch a break with F-Secure reporting about some what they call misleading behavior in Intel's AMT or Active Management Technology Engine. This is the part of Intel's framework that has caused a lot of problems before. Some vendors have started shipping laptops with this particular part disabled. Now, this latest flaw, I'm not really sure how severe it really is, and I think uh, probably of the misleading uh, documentation or so is here the best uh, way to put the risk here. Essentially, what this comes down to is if you have a laptop and it does include that AMT feature and you don't configure it, then of course it's configured with the default password. Now, by default, all the remote access is disabled. But what could happen now is that if an attacker has physical access to the laptop, they could enable those remote access features and essentially get unrestricted access to your laptop without your security software being able to notice it. So it's a little bit of variation of that evil mate attack where an unattended laptop is being reconfigured in order to allow remote access. Overall, well, that's really what sort of AMT and some of these features are supposed to prevent, but you do have to configure those features. You do have to set a custom password in order to protect your laptop. And probably where the misleading part comes in is that there is a BIOS password and there is an AMT password. So really by changing just a BIOS password, you're not protecting AMT and you're still vulnerable. And VMware fixed an interesting vulnerability in its workstation products, which also includes VMware Fusion. This flaw is only exposed if you're enabling the VMware NAT service with IPv6 mode. IPv6 mode is usually turned off, but if you have it enabled, then you're exposing yourself to an integer overflow, which can be used to execute arbitrary code on the host. So this could lead to a classic VM escape situation where an exploit on a guest is being used to execute arbitrary code on the guest and then this being escalated via this integer overflow to execute code on the host. Patches are available from VMware for Workstation 12, 14, as well as for VMware Fusion 8 and 10. And Lenovo fixed a vulnerability in its enterprise switches. Uh, this vulnerability is essentially yet another undocumented username password or a backdoor that has apparently been present in these products since 2004. Now, interestingly, Lenovo only recently sort of took over this particular business. Some of these switches back in 2004 were sold by Nortel and according to Lenovo, a particular customer of Nortel's did actually ask for uh, this particular backdoor and in one of Lenovo's security advisories it's also referred to as HP backdoor. 
So if you are having a switch that's running ENOS, short for Enterprise Network Operating System, double check and if it's an older switch, there may be different brand names involved. Uh, for example, Nord, as I mentioned, maybe HP and possibly IBM because Lenovo actually got this business from IBM in 2014. In particular, you may be vulnerable if you expose Telnet or web access, if you're using SSH, then you're only vulnerable if your firmware was released on June 2004 or earlier. And Lenovo systems running CNOS or the Cloud Network Operating System are not vulnerable to this particular issue. And then just a quick update on the contest to win a Raspberry Pi or one out of five by finding factual mistakes I made in the podcast. Apparently last week I said port 333 for the Monero Stratum port. It should actually be 3,333. I guess at one point in the podcast I said 300 and later I said the correct number. So keep those submissions coming and thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.